Okay, we're live back here at Hadoop World 2012. We're here with Stefan from Datamir, who's been on theCUBE many times. Welcome back. Uh, we have a short, we want to squeeze you in because one, you're CUBE alumni. We always make room for CUBE alumni. Um, and we're expanding, you see we got Studio B over here. So after the interview, you can go to Studio B and do, a, do some do additional commentary. We, we, we do want to hear from you. Um, last time we were on theCUBE, we talked about unstructured, structured data. And that was like kind of the rage back then. Now it's kind of pretty much out of the, out of the conversation because it's a done deal. People are admitting that's just the way it is. It's not yep. an either or, they're out there, you got to do it. In some cases, structured data sets are great for rolling up reports out of the NoSQL environments. Yep. So that's your bread and butter. Mm -hmm. So give us an update on that, where your business is relative to that dynamic, and then we'd like to ask you some questions around some scale around that. Yeah, so, well, let me back up a little bit, right? So really, the, the big picture is, traditionally we have a three-tier architecture for data analytics. We have ETL, extract, transform, load, where we take data from a data source and then we massage it into our static data warehouse, our, you know, pick your favorite database that has a star or snowflake schema. Um, and we highly optimize the data into that schema uh, for performance reasons because we had limited search and compute. And then we put BI on top of that, right? So it's a three-tier architecture. Every time you add a new data source, you change your schema, what means you change your BI. Every time you change your BI, have a more sophisticated question, you change your schema, what means you change your ETL. So we do this now since 40 years, basically because we had unlimited, we had limitations in search and compute. What Hadoop really brings to the table is that we don't have search and compute limitations anymore. Moore's law picked up. So what we do is structured or unstructured data, we pull it into Hadoop without pre-optimization, uh, without snowflake schema stuff, uh, schema or anything like this. And then because Hadoop has so much compute power for such a low cost, um, we can create as many data models, as many views, as many transformation on the raw data, but we always leave the raw data there. So I think we really break generally the concept of the slow three tier, three vendor, three groups of people, three piece of hardware architecture there. Um, and the beauty really with all of this, as you said, with no SQL, um, we're not just limited to structural data. We really can create as many views on all kinds of data, and that's important, right? The problem today is not so much big data. Big data is a big buzzword uh, to make big money, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Um, or, but yeah. the problem or big is, views if you're a media company like yeah, us. Yeah, <laughs> um, the problem is data complexity, really, right? So we have uh, one of the biggest banks in the world, they have to implement Basel II. Basel II is that law that um, you know is, uh, was uh, implemented after the financial meltdown. They have 250 data sources. How do you want to do this with traditional? And I think there's really the power of Hadoop um, and uh, the modern approach, more slots kicking and we can do a lot of things. I want to ask you about Avi Mehta's comment, Trisay, the founder, just was on. He said you have to throw away all your assumptions when asked about sending, because he built a successful business from scratch in, in the financial vertical around using Hadoop. Yeah, it's a little bit different, you have a different background, your data's your company, but he said to people out there, throw away all assumptions. So you're, with the new solid state advancement with disk, you now got compute power, you mentioned you can bring new stuff in. What assumptions does you, the customers have to throw away? Dealing with your value proposition and yeah. Hadoop in general, what would you say? So I think we really need to get away from that 3 t architecture, from that pre-optimization of data, right? Do you guys have an iPhone by any chance? Yeah. Max. So, you know, the reason we have those kind of wonderful technology is that we have more compute power, stronger chips, and I think it's time that we bring this to analytics, and the opportunities are gigantic. Though, um, you know, I think that uh, traditional business intelligence will stay the way it is. Um, we look at transactional data, you know, how much money per region did I make? What we really see as a big pull for Hadoop and this uh, NoSQL technology wave is looking at interactions, right? Mm -hmm. um, how much click-through did I got for my ads, and not how mm -hmm. much click-through I got, but actually how much converted into deals, right? It's three different data sources. One is semi-structured, machine-generated data, and this is where it's getting interesting, where we actually try to create this 360-degree view in our organization to understand what's going on. We need to understand interactions of our customers with our brand to optimize. I mean, that's the only thing that really differentiates companies today from each other, um, really looking at how people interact with us. Did they come back after they called into our call center? You know, uh, are there cross snaps or opportunities? And there's gigantic business opportunities to lower churn, increase conversion rate, and that's really what we see uh, being extremely successful in this technology. And I think 
I mean, we obviously go to a um, traditional hype cycle here. Mm -hmm. I think we need to bring the conversation down where Hadoop and NoSQL a really helpful tool in the toolbox and stop talking about Hadoop can do the dishes and print money as well. <laughs> um, but really look at what it brings to the table. Mm -hmm. It's obviously not good for real time, right? It's all sequential data, that's all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, what about, you know, I've been covering the BI market for, for a long time, and we've been hearing from the more traditional BI vendors about, you know, BI for the masses, we're going we're gonna to roll it out to, you know, self-service BI, where there's going to be, you know, a wide adoption in the enterprise. And we have, that never really happened. Yeah. Um, it's still pretty low adoption, just in the traditional BI world. So, that's problem is still, you know, still going to be an issue in, in the big data world. How are you attacking that? How is, that, how is BI in the big data context going to be different than BI yeah. in the more traditional context? Um, that's a very good question. So. I would say that my observation almost two decades working in a BI space is that you have a friction point. And the friction is between IT and the business users. And to be very honest, uh, even though we want to democratize uh, data access on the BI side, um, IT is controlling which data do I have access to. They model the schema, they set up the databases. right? So if I want to get a new insight today, I basically have to go back to IT mm -hmm. and argue why I want to change the right. database schema. Let me give you a real uh, world example. So we're working with a retailer, a pretty big retailer, and they're trying to optimize their um, logistic. So they look at market basket analytics, all that data, and it's a beautiful, gigantic MMP database. Um, and we have a rather young data analyst that says, look, I found this 10 megabyte weather data set and I would like to bring it together because our you know, highly sophisticated data mining algorithms are just moving the needle by half percent. So um, instead of changing the schema, what was totally impossible in mm -hmm. his gigantic MMP database, um, he used Datamere and uh, pulled 2.5 trillion records into the Datamere environment, added a 10 megabyte weather data set. And of course they sell more ice cream and water uh, when it's hot and more packaged food and batteries if the next storm's coming up, they, but they could never see that. Where again, I think what is really, really interesting is that schema-free approach, um, the approach of bringing data together because this is bringing a more holistic view together. And for data scientists, this is important. Mm -hmm. Everybody now said, with a better feature vector, you actually get better results. And as the CTO of Google said, it's about more data, not better algorithms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you, one of the other, um, your recent uh, release of Datamere 2.0, I believe. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, we talked a little bit uh, beforehand about some of the collaboration capabilities. Share with our audience a, a bit about that and uh, talk a little bit about the importance of collaboration when it comes to working Absolutely. with data. Absolutely, so um, in every organization there's multiple people that are working on data and um, you know there are folks that like SQL but how do you collaborate on SQL? Well, you send it around for email or you put it into, into a source control system. So I think what's very important if you write software, native SQL code, Java code or um, you know, you collaborate on data analytics is that everybody understands what you're doing and then, then we can talk about it. That's really the first hurdle. Mm -hmm. With a spreadsheet user interface that we provide, it's very similar, it's very visual. We actually in 2.0 um, introduced uh, the first uh, version of our data lineage capabilities that gives you actually graph representation. This is very important. For example, one of the biggest problems in the banking meltdown was the data was so many times copied, ETL, mm. and you did a rounding mistake here and a rounding mistake there, that uh, folks just lost track. What's the data flow in my organization? Mm -hmm. Now with our approach, just bring in the data on Hadoop and do as many transformations as you want. Now we can visually show you a graph that this data set that you see right here was a multi-join from those three tables mm -hmm and then a string manipulation here, and a this here, and so on. So I think that's, that's very important that, first of all, you have a common context you can talk about, and then I think it's very, again, important that the tools support the collaboration effect. Mm -hmm. So it's all about the data lineage and seeing where it came from, and not, uh, you mentioned those you know, little errors, but they add up. Yeah. Uh, to the point where you know the, the data is suspect. So uh, talk about you know we've had a few uh, guests on talking about bringing bringing analytics into the Hadoop environment yeah. as opposed to moving the data out of out Absolutely. of Hadoop. And we've kind of been touching on that in, in our conversation now. But talk a little bit more specifically about why that's important uh, to bring you know the the analytics to where the data lives as opposed to yeah. moving it out to a separate separate system. I think it's important that we make things simpler. Right, and again, the trick here is to um, invest more in hardware, uh, storage and compute, um, but minimize the complexity. The, the really big problem of organizations is complexity. They, they have a piece of hardware for ETL, they have a piece of hardware for their database, they have a piece of hardware for their uh, BI tool. Then they have three groups working on this, they have three vendors, three phone numbers, and everything is highly dependent. 
putting everything in Hadoop, the data integration, the data management, storage, compute there, and the analytics and leave it in Hadoop is a reduction of complexity. I mean, Hadoop is not even coughing if you pull out hardware. Um, on the other hand side, if one of your ETL servers fail, mm -hmm. your whole analytics pipeline basically uh, collapsed. So the beauty of putting everything into Hadoop mm -hmm. and kind of uh, give access to the data scientist that might like to write code, cascading, uh, pick, uh, map reduce, whatever it might be, or again, um, with our tool, empowering really the folks that kind of understands the data, uh, the business user that really have ideas and, and want to figure things out, um, is the right approach. Mm -hmm. I think we need to reduce complexity mm -hmm. uh, in our uh, data centers. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, with that being said, we're hearing a lot about at this conference about you know the the, the need to integrate Hadoop you know seamlessly into your existing environment. We're hearing you know the, the strategy of, of Clutter and Hortonworks and others is to you know partner with the likes of Teradata and others. Um, so, w what is your approach in terms of you know for the time being? There's still there's still a lot of you know people aren't ripping and replacing at this point. So Absolutely. so how are you, how do you approach integrating uh, with existing IT when your you know your real view of the world is let's try to load everything into Hadoop? Well, so first of all, I totally agree with you. Integration is a must have, and there's no way around. And our approach, I don't think, is really rip and replace. I think we have a new tool in the toolbox that allows you to do other kind of use case. That's why I said traditional BI mm -hmm. in my RDBMS with ETL and BI, it's just fine, but it's transactional data. Right. And if we want to understand interactions, this is where Hadoop comes in, and this is kind of a new use case, new approach, and there's a big business opportunities here, and that's what people are starting to get. Mm -hmm. Datamere's approach is we really seamlessly integrate, actually more than any other vendor out there. You know, other vendors' approach is, well, you copy the data out of Hadoop, mm -hmm. but we don't care. We can link to data in your Teradata, in your Oracle, in your DB2, in your MySQL, MSSQL. We have connectors to 25 different data sources, mm -hmm. where if I mean data source, all the different databases is one data source. We talk social media, Twitter, uh, Facebook data, JSON, XML. We even have a connector to mainframe data to pull data out, out of mainframe, if you heard Phil Shelley earlier today, um, mm -hmm. to pull it out of the mainframe, and actually pushing it back again into the system. So this is really, really important, but integration does not stop just in pulling data in or pushing data out back. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of customers that you know run a crystal report in a database or what have mm -hmm. you. So we, we actually, all, all our connectors are bidirectional. But you know, let's be realistic. Enterprise integration means security integration. Where we do more than just Kerberos. Kerberos is not really the industry standard, industry standards, LDAP, Active Directory. We actually integrate with all of them mm -hmm. to make sure it's possible. You need monitoring solutions, right? You need uh, alerts and notification. Um, you need uh, data cleaning integration. You need metadata integration. All of that we actually do. Uh, we're not a bubble. Uh, we understand if you really want to be installed at the biggest banks in the world, what well, we are, um, that you know there's a whole collection of things you need to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, so talk about, uh, you know, from a company perspective, give mm -hmm. us a, kind of an update and talk a little bit about, uh, you know, there's a lot of entrepreneurs here and this ecosystem is really just exploding. I mean, there's oh, yeah. so many different types of vendors here. So uh, maybe talk a little bit about your experiences kind of building a company uh, from the ground up in this kind of environment. Yeah, um, great question. So I'm coming up on 10 years Hadoop. Um, I was one of the first three guys that actually contributed to Nudge. Right, and if you wonder where the Hadoop logo comes from, now, now you happen to know where yellow elephants run around. Um, but um, it's an interesting ride. So from a few guys, you know, we didn't start in a garage, but we all kind of worked from home back then at Notch and, and we contributed. Um, and we brought Notch from a more kind of a research focused project mm -hmm. um, into a platform. Um, I worked on the plugin sy system for Notch that actually allowed companies to be built on that platform, Fundcast, Google, build it on that platform, and this is where it took off really, where we saw storage and compute requirements beyond web crawling and mm -hmm. indexing there. And it's really, really beautiful. What most people really forgot um, in the last few years with all that hype about big data is that actually Hadoop is highly optimized for sequential data access. What means is, incredible fast on your laptop. Right, so a lot of people have instant reactions, oh, you, you have to have a big cluster. But it's not true, it actually is very efficient on, on, your, on your laptop in that phase. So building a company with really a groundbreaking different way, it, this is very exciting. Um, it's, it's interesting to see, um, actually if you come to my presentation later, I show a graph um, of the Hadoop ecosystem where there was five companies in 2008, 
we have 111 <laughs> companies by today that say they have a big data something, right? <laughs> big data pretzel or big data <laughs> uh, a fridge now. Um, it, it's really interesting, but what we generally see is that the traditional vendors really, you know, you have kind of the first day fighting you, uh, first they laugh at you, then they fight you, then they integrate <laughs> with you, and eventually you really uh, disrupt the market there. Um, you know, folks say, well, Hadoop is a perfect ETL engine. Well, guess what? We have ETL, distributed ETL since 15 years. Well, Hadoop is a great um, MMP database, other folks say. Well, we have MMP databases since 10 years, and actually, Systems like Hive are not very fast and only support 30% of the SQL there. And then you have folks that are just repeating big data often enough and they're in memory databases now big data as well. Um, and copying data back and forth is the big story. I think what is, there's an extremely powerful new technology and just jumping on the hype with the buzzwords is not helpful and I see a lot of rather younger companies doing that. And there's a risk, um, there's a risk that as an entrepreneur you invest a lot of time in your life um, that is, you know, you really put your heart to this, but it will not have a chance that you're not truly doing something new. So um, that's what we see and we're very excited about really changing something here. Um, and we see folks uh, doing amazing things, but it's really important to understand the low level, mm -hmm. you know, and really go for some innovative approach that helps people. Just having the right buzzwords uh, on your marketing material will not cut it. Well, big data meets big analytics meets big money, right? <laughs> so that's the big story, right? So my final question to you is much more of a just practical one. Um, the big problem that everyone's having here at the show or challenge, hence opportunity, is getting data out of, say, age base, for example. There's just too much information in there and you know, export tools are challenging. Um, how do you guys are addressing that? If I'm a, pretend for a minute I'm a, a potential customer and I have a um, H big HBase database, fairly good size, and I want to get stuff out, I don't want to export it to Excel. You definitely I, don't, right? How so, do I do that, can you help me? Yes, absolutely, so we have uh, HBase or Cassandra connectors uh, for that matter, and what is important How much is, can I move out, all of it? Right, so, so here's the difference between data mirror and other spreadsheets that you hear, right? Traditionally, spreadsheet copies data into the spreadsheet and then holds the data hostage. Our spreadsheet is a design tool. Basically, that allows you to design the data processing pipeline you want to apply, and then we push the processing downstream, right? In that case, Hadoop or HBase uh, for that matter. So I think what is very important, what, we, what Hadoop brings to the table is that the computation analytics happens very closely to the data. And that's why we get that incredible throughput that we see. Where traditionally you move data around to do the analytics and, and you know you need uh, the super expensive network um, equipment. Where again, what Hadoop is all about is running the analytics on the CPU that also has the data. And that's a big you know, fundamental breakthrough here. And it's the approach we're doing. So don't move it into the spreadsheet, actually move the spreadsheet to the data and then you can do the things you're looking for. So minimize the movement of data is the trick to make. What about the limitations of how much data can be manipulated? I mean, we, we operate in petabyte scale data mirror, right? Because we, again, on analyze, analytics. On analytics. Wow. Um, we have, uh, we have uh, two digit petabyte analytics running daily. We have customers that are running two million reports a year on our platform. And the, yeah, the beauty is just data mirror natively sits on Hadoop, where other analytics pipelines just copying data out of Hadoop. Mm -hmm. um, we pushing our analytics to Hadoop, we just expose the design tool into your spreadsheet, what means we want it. So given that you're involved in Nutch with Doug Cutting and those guys, what do you think about uh, Doug's focus with Avro? Um, I think it's great. I, I really like Avro. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a set of different um, serialization and storage tools around there. Um, obviously, Afro uh, does uh, a lot of really smart things to optimize throughput. Um, it's very important. I think standardization on data serialization is the right way to go. Uh, it's very early. We have to do more in performance optimization there. Um, so we integrate with Afro, right? We can read Afro or write Afro file format, but under the hood, we use a, a highly optimized tuple format um, to get certain performances that we would like to see. So this is the right way to go, this is the future, because in the long run, we just want to have storage and compute as a plug in the wall, and we have to have an open architecture there to integrate with all the different data. Okay, Stefan, thanks for coming and sharing with you a Thank little bit more much. time. 
Uh, great to have you in, Pioneer and Big Data. Business is good, obviously doing better than even the last time. Uh, it is big money, big data, big money, big analytics. Congratulations, uh, all your success. Okay, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you.